thank the shopper of the work here at Chalky Monk for allowing me to share the pulpit this morning. Jesus. And Sister Sheena for the invitation. Amen. I bring you greetings from our senior pastor at Beth Eden, Reverend Carl Hickson, who is actually on vacation, but he called this morning to send his greetings. And also from our district superintendent, Brother Andre Sobers. I brought with me today a really, 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 really good really? friend of yeah, mine, yeah, yeah. Sister Shari. And I don't know if she wants to greet you. Do you want to greet them? No. <laughs> but she just stands there and reads. The Gospel according to St. Matthew, chapter 15, beginning to read at verse 21. The Gospel of St. Matthew, chapter 15, beginning to read at verse number 21. Then Jesus went out from there and departed to the region of Tyre and Sidon. And behold, a woman of Canaan came from that region and cried out to him, saying, Have mercy on me, O Lord, son of David. My daughter is severely demon-possessed. But he answered her not a word. And his disciples came and urged him, saying, Send her away, for she cries after us. But he answered and said, I was not sent except to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Then she came and worshipped him, saying, Lord, help me. But he answered and said, It is not good to take the children's bread and throw it to the little dogs. And she answered and said, Yes, Lord. Yet even the little dogs eat the crumbs which fall from the master's table. Then Jesus answered and said to her, O woman, great is your faith. Let it be to you as you desire. And her daughter was healed from that very hour. Almighty and everlasting God. As we probe your word to find insights on this Christian journey, we pray that your name will be glorified. Your people will be edified. And the very devil will be terrified. Father, we pray that your Holy Spirit would so saturate this place that as your word would go forth, that each and every individual would sit and receive what you are saying, them, saying to them today. These mercies we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 You may be seated. Our biblical text today introduces us to a woman who is in crisis, chaos, and confusion. She is seeking to rise above her present situation. Her daughter is demon possessed. Her daughter is not acting right. Her daughter is not doing right. Her daughter is not living right. And she comes to Jesus desperate in crisis, chaos, and confusion. I know that there is crisis, chaos, and confusion in this woman's life because of the simplicity of her prayer. Whenever there is crisis, chaos, and confusion in your life, you don't have time for any long, drawn-out prayer. She simply comes to Jesus and says to Jesus, Jesus, the son of David, would you have mercy on me because my daughter is demon-possessed. My daughter is not living right. My daughter is not acting right. My daughter is not doing right. And somebody at the sound of my voice today has someone or something in your life that is not doing right by you or that is not acting right by you and there is crisis, chaos, and confusion in your life. Perhaps you don't have crisis, chaos, and confusion today, but just live a little longer and you'll realize that sometimes it rains on your parade. Jesus is traveling and he is preaching the gospel and out of nowhere comes what I call a desperate sister. I know she is desperate because of the simplicity of her prayer and whenever you need God to do something like yesterday, you don't have time for any long drawn up prayer. She simply said, Jesus, the son of David, would you have mercy on me? Notice her prayer request. Her prayer request was not for a car. Her prayer request was not for clothes. 
for Puritans was not for Josh. It was simply for Jesus to have mercy on her. It amazes me, First Lady, that she is praying for mercy for her, but the problem is with her daughter. The precious chaos and confusion is with her child, but she is telling Jesus to have mercy on her, which implies to me that the woman could probably be blaming herself for her daughter's situation. Perhaps if I was a better mother, my child wouldn't be this way. Perhaps if I was a better wife, my husband might not have left me. But it doesn't matter how good you are, sometimes bad things do happen to good people. She's got a child that's not doing right. And somebody is sitting there in the congregation and thinking, Kimar, it is not my child, but I got somebody in my house that is not doing right, that is not loving me right, that is not acting right. And somebody else might be saying, it is not my child, it is not somebody in my house, but it's somebody on my job who is smiling to my face, trying to stab me in my back because they don't understand that I got this job because of the grace of God. There is somebody else who is there. It is not the child, it is not the job, it is not anybody at home, but it is somebody in church, Sister Sheena. Somebody smiling in my face, but when I break out in a shout, they're saying it don't take all of that. And the reason they say it don't take all of that because if they understood where the Lord brought me from, and they understood they would realize that it takes more than that and a lot more. So if he hasn't done anything for you today, you can sit there and look cute. But if he picked you up and turned you around, you Somebody else is saying, it is not my child, it is not my job, it is not anybody in my house, it is not anybody at church, but the problem is me. I need Jesus to have mercy on me. Sometimes the number one person you're looking at in the mirror is that person that is hindering your progress. And that's why you ought to thank God for mercy this morning. This show is not for the Mercedes. This show is not for money. This show is not for a mansion. It's just for mercy. And the reason you ought to thank God for mercy this morning is because you've been places that you shouldn't have been and you've done stuff that you shouldn't have done, but God showed you mercy anyway. And if you can't show over mercy, you'll never be able to show over grace because mercy woke me up this morning. Grace started me on my way. Mercy was clapping in my hand. Grace was stomping in my feet. Is there anybody who can praise God just for his mercy? She simply comes to Jesus and says, Jesus, thou son of David, would you have mercy on me? She comes desperate. It's all these this morning, by the way. She comes desperate. And what I call between the devil and the deep blue sea. She doesn't have any time for a long 15 or 20 minute drawing up prayer. But she got straight to the point. Yes, 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 yes. But the text tells us that even in her desperation, she meets a disinterested savior. The Bible says that Jesus answers her not a word. He says nothing. Zip. Nada. Or as the young people would say, he dissed her. And that bothers me a little bit because I know who he is. In John chapter 1 and verse 1, it tells us in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. How is it that he who is the Word 
ain't got a word for me <laughs> in my desperate situation. You see, I can make it if I don't have any money and I still have a word. I can make it if I don't have any honey, but I still have a word. But what do you do when you don't have any money, you don't have a honey, and you still don't have a word? Why would Jesus diss her in her desperation? He answers her not a word, not a revelation. What's up with Jesus today? Everybody else, you've been giving a word, and I'm desperate, and you can't give me a word. Why would Jesus diss her in her desperation? Well, our text today is tailored to teach us some stuff. The reason why Jesus diss her in her desperation is because he is not moved by desperation. The reason why Jesus diss her in her desperation is because he's not moved by desperation. And I know why you can't shout here, because you believe that he is moved by desperation. But the reason you'll be able to pierce here is because sometimes in your desperation, you make some deadly decisions. Yeah, yeah. I am so glad that in my desperation, God didn't always give me everything that I asked for because it might have been good to me, but it might not have been good for me. I just need one or two people who can shout not for the doors that God has opened, yeah. but for the ones that he has closed. Yeah. 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 But yeah. 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 Amen. Amen. There are some people that ought to thank God because he didn't let me marry that joker. <laughs> thank God that he didn't let you get that job. Thank God that he didn't let you get that house that you wanted because it might have been good to you, but it might not have been good for you. And there are some people who are desperate. When they're desperate, they make some deadly decisions. And they usually say, Lord, if you get me out of this, I promise that I will serve you. And then a month after, they forgot all of it. All the situation. He is not moved by our desperation because sometimes in our desperation we make some deadly decisions. Sometimes God leads us in our desperation to teach us how to depend on Him. I've learned to wait on the Lord. Because they that wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall walk up like they Sometimes we just have to wait upon the Lord and not be hasty in our desperation. She comes in desperation. She meets a disinterest savior. And now she you knows she had to deal with some deluded saints. The disciple says, Lord, would you send her away? For she is bothering us or she is praying after us. There is something here that bothers me. She comes in desperation. She meets a disinterested savior. And notice she doesn't speak to the armor bearer. She doesn't speak to security. She goes to Jesus himself. This single woman meets a single savior and yet still the disciples turned around and said, Lord, would you send her away for she is bothering us? Or if you read the Message Bible, the Message Bible says, Lord, would you send her away for she is driving us crazy? Lord, would you send her away for she's driving us crazy? But if you unpack that one verse, you would realize that the disciples are telling lies on her because she didn't even holler at them. She simply said, Jesus, singular, the son of David, would you have mercy on me? And look at the disciples' response. Lord, would you send her away because she is driving us crazy? Where did they come from? She wasn't even 
speaking to them. And there are some saints in the church, when they cry out to God with a request, the sister next to you would tell you, it will take all of that. But you weren't speaking to her. So where did they come from? Yeah. And the application for us today as a church, can I say to you that your praise is no good until it bothers somebody. Yeah. Your praise is no good until it drives somebody crazy. Because if I ask your neighbor, it's my praise bothering you. It's my shout bothering you. If you thought that I shouted at 10 o'clock, you ain't seen nothing yet. If you thought that I shouted last week, you ain't seen nothing yet. My praise is about to bother somebody. Until it bothers somebody. That's why you want to go ahead today and do what I call at that Eden a pew check. You don't want to be sitting next to anybody that you when you break out in a show, break out in a show with you. You don't want to be sitting next to anybody who look like they've been sucking lemon all night. <laughs> desperation. She meets a disinterest savior. She has to deal with some deluded saints. God is not, Jesus is not moved with her desperation. The disciples said, Lord, would you send her away? And you would notice in verse number 24 that Jesus answers her and said, I was not sent except to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Um, it's looking back to Jesus City. First, he dissed her. She had to deal with some deluded saints. And now he opens his mouth and gives her an answer. And the answer that he gives her doesn't even make sense. What? are you talking about? I was not sent except to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. What does that have to do with me and my daughter being demon possessed? I asked you if you could help me and you're going to give me a theological answer. I'm from Canaan. I haven't been to Bible school. I have no idea what the lost sheep of the house of Israel means. And I know that this is going to bother some of you. But doesn't it ever faze you that the response that Jesus gives you to your request sometimes just doesn't make sense? Let's get real. You wanted him tall? He said him. He said him short. <laughs> you wanted Deborah? He said, Delilah. <laughs> the answer that he gives you sometimes just doesn't make sense. And I know that you all are deep and spiritual and all, so it makes sense to you. But sometimes I wonder if he gets my request mixed up with somebody else. And sometimes it is not even the answer. But if in the human flesh you read the Bible, Sheena, without your spiritual eyes on, sometimes things in there just don't make sense. 
Let me give you some examples. Bless them that they spitefully use you. Yeah. If you read that in the human flesh, you know that don't make sense. Yeah. Yeah. Another one is if he slaps you or one cheek, yeah. yeah. you know that don't make sense. Yeah. And there's one more. If he asks you to go one mile, don't just go one mile, go the extra mile. I'm already tired after going the first mile. And you're going to tell me to go an extra mile. Sometimes the answer doesn't make sense. But my issue is not with the answer. My issue is with the lady's response. The Bible tells us with a nonsense answer, she worshipped. She said, Lord, you're Come on. still holy. Louis. Lord, you're still worthy. Yeah. Yeah. Lord, what you did tell me didn't make sense, but thank you anyway. Yeah. The answer we didn't are. make sense, but it yeah. did not affect her praise. Does the answer always have to make sense for yeah. you to worship? Yeah. Does he always have to give you what on, you want to worship? Yeah. Or can you say, God, it doesn't matter if you bless me we or not. the mere yeah. fact that you save me, it's even enough to give you some yes. praise. Hallelujah. 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 Yeah. The answer doesn't make sense. Hallelujah. And her response is, she still worships. Yeah. And at the end of verse 25, she tags her prayer request. Uh -huh. Lord, help me. In Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You see, worship creates the atmosphere Hallelujah. for us yeah. to ask yeah. Yeah. Of things for God. Yeah. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Through spirit worship, she still worship. Yeah. Hallelujah. When she didn't understand. Mm -hmm. She still worship when he didn't answer her request the way yeah. she wanted yeah. the yes, request. Lord. Thank you, Lord. Yeah. As she tied her request, Lord, would you help me? Yeah. Yeah. She started with, Lord, have mercy, mercy. on me. Yeah. Yeah. And then she tied, Lord, would you help me? And then in verse 26, Jesus answers her again and says, it is not good to take the children's bread and throw it to the dogs. My problem is not with the response. My problem is with when he gives the response. Look when he gave her the response. After she worshipped, Hallelujah. After she sowed a seed, Hallelujah. After she swung off of the chandelier, he said, "It is not good for me to take the children's bread and to throw it to the dogs." What kind of answer is that after worship? <laughs> Come on, up. I expect that answer in pre-worship. But this is after I've paid my time. This is after I've blessed God. This is after I did ministry. And Jesus says to me, it is not good to take the children's bread and to throw it to the dogs. Not only is he not moved by desperation, but he is not manipulated by worship. Not only is he not moved by desperation, but he is not manipulated by worship. Those of you who want to use worship as a magic wand, those of you who want to use worship as a marching stick, those of you who want to use yeah. worship to manipulate God yeah. instead of magnifying Him, Amen. it is not yeah. going to work. Amen. It needs yeah. to be that degree of worship Shit. where you can say, I will worship, worship Him not because of what He's done yeah. for me, yeah. but yeah. just because of who He is. Yeah. Yeah. If He never gives me another blessing, yes. I'll still worship Him. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. 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 Amen. Jesus said to her, Amen. It is not good to take the children's bread and throw it to the dogs. And when you read the Message Bible, the Message Bible says that she was quick. And she turned around and she looked at Jesus. She probably thought, 
I wasn't going to go there. But since you want to go there, let's go there. <laughs> I don't know any theology. I don't know any numerology. But let's speak some dogology. <laughs> you call me a dog, but master, you're right. But beggars still get the scraps that come yeah. from the, the master's master table. Yeah. She said, I am not entitled to the bread. And in fact, I don't even know why you're tripping because I didn't even ask for the bread. I just wanted to know, can you help me out with my demon for that daughter? You can keep the bread, but at least give me the crumbs. Just give me a little something. And I know the reason why some of you are looking at me strangely. Because if you were in that woman's position, you, you would have had an attitude. And you would have said, if I am not going to get the bread, I am not taking any crumbs. If you're not going to give me the bread, then just don't give me anything anyway. But the woman said, if you ain't going to give me the bread, just give me some crumbs. So I stopped talking to Jesus for a little bit. And I started to talk to the woman. Why would you settle for crumbs? This is Jesus you're speaking to. The master that provides everything. Everything, all of them needs. And why would you settle for crumbs when he has a multitude of friends? Hallelujah. And it reminded me of my friend Jazz. Jazz's mother had a strange rule in the house. Yes. And the mother's rule was that you could not eat dinner until daddy got home. And one Friday evening, Jazz came home from school and she was hungry, and she put the key 